out of 10 cats. In the fast lane, it's Richard Hammond. Best foot forward, it's Paul Foot. And their team captain, John Locke. And facing them tonight, see you later, calculator. It's Carol Borderman. He's having a laugh. It's Matt Ford. And their team captain, John Richardson. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 43% of men flirt with people behind their partner's backs? I have to confess, I sometimes flirt with people without telling my girlfriend, but it doesn't mean anything, it's just a bit of harmless banter in the steam room of a gay sauna. It's nothing. <laughs> 11% of single women have already picked out their wedding dress. It's an important decision. It's a lot of money to spend on a dress you're only going to wear never. <laughs> And video game controllers have five times the amount of germs found on a toilet seat. It's their own fault for giving them that vibrate function. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our palace job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. John Steen, what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? The, the Sinead O'Connor's back in the news. Tell me all about it. Miley Cyrus done a sexy dance and Sinead O'Connor's angry at Miley Cyrus, which strikes me as odd. I mean, I don't think Miley Cyrus has ever made a decision in her own life. It's like getting angry at Tony the Tiger because you don't like a Frosty's advert. <laughs> she cried in the video and she said, oh, I was crying for my dead dog. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's because Disney were killing it in front of her at the time. <laughs> Cry in the video, yeah, that's nice. Cry while I kill your dagger. Well, the controversy has been that uh, Sinead O'Connor has got involved and written an open letter. What, what, do you, what do you think? But they wrote open letters back to each other. Didn't, didn't Miley Cyrus then respond? She, she then and tweeted her, I believe, yeah. But the reason Sinead O'Connor did it, isn't it because she was cross because Miley Cyrus said she was imitating her? I think she said that the, the tear in the video was a homage to her Nothing Compares to You video. She was Hannah Montana, wasn't she? She was Hannah Montana. I think that's really the thing that's caused the controversy, because she used to be this incredibly clean-cut Disney star, and now she's making videos like Wrecking Ball. Should we, should we have a look at the video? Mm. We should have a little look, shouldn't we? Don't you ever say I just walked away Did you like it? I absolutely loved it, although I'm disappointed, cos I'd heard... Well, I misheard. I thought she licked off MC Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Deeply disappointed. See, that's the bit I didn't like, cos I'm sort of worried about rust. <laughs> I suppose when she's licking the hammer, she's not singing. That's something. <laughs> she's got the power. Uh, 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 uh. It's also she's also going... <clears throat> <clears throat> I was hoping it would be a freezing cold day and her tongue got stuck there. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, I might be getting old, but when I saw that video, I thought, I hope that's not a pub they're knocking down. <laughs> <laughs> I just think... I used to be a civil engineer, you know, back in the day, and it's the cleanest construction site I've ever seen. I was sort of more interested in how they kept the wrecking ball so clean. Well, she licked I... it on, hadn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Paul, did you enjoy the video? Well, I mean, I just think they're all doing all this sexting now and they're taking their clothes off. I mean, could it possibly be that maybe it's because their music isn't actually that good? <laughs> How no. very dare you? I mean, you didn't... <clears throat> but you didn't see J.S. Bach sort of pulling his pants down <laughs> around the streets of Brandenburg, did you? It's very hard to do a drawing of that. <laughs> <laughs> Pull them up. It's fun to watch famous people do stuff like that. I'd like to see Chris Martin on a giant falafel. <laughs> 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 and he 
he swings out of the pit of red and you see like a little bit of his, his flank and uh, his, his meat and two veg. And just as he swings, and then he's just as you think you've seen it, he swings back into the falafel pocket. And out again like that. He's going, woo, what a big falafel. That'd be nice. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's up there. Yes, Sinead O'Connor has angrily criticised Miley Cyrus for her raunchy video. It was shocking seeing Miley Cyrus on stage at the MTV Awards in a skimpy outfit rubbing herself up against a penis, or Robin Thicke, as he's otherwise known. <laughs> uh, Sean Steen, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Batches! <laughs> <laughs> Badgers! It's a very upbeat response. Ah, they can't kill all the badgers. Well, they don't know how many there are. They've, badgers have moved the goalposts. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a quote from a government minister. When Environment Secretary Owen Patterson was asked if he'd move the goalposts, because they're now saying they need to kill more badgers, he said the badgers have moved the goalposts. <laughs> they do! And that's why they must die. That's just... That's <laughs> they do! Richard, what's your problem with We've got with a massive problem with badgers. We have a lot of badgers anyway, and now we've got all these refugee badgers coming in, running away <laughs> from all these... sound like Clarkson, mate. No! <laughs> <laughs> he was rude about badgers. No, he was rude about badgers. I like badgers. But I only like the ones that we already had, and then all the protesters were blowing whistles and banging saucepans to scare them away. So now they've all come and lived at our place, and that's kind of chucked our home badgers out. And... Um, How can you tell the difference between the new badgers and the old badgers? Well, they've got different accents. Because, <laughs> no, I think the cull's a good thing, because they say that there's the equivalent of one dead badger for every ten yards between Tiverton and Exeter. They always say that, don't they? Yeah, yeah. people are always saying that. No, but it's actually quite a useful way of finding your way home. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, instead of just sprinkling rose petals as you walk along... <laughs> just follow the a usual trail method, dead, yes. You know, a trail of dead woodland animals. <laughs> we gave it to them. That's what I feel sorry for. We, get, we caught TB in the Industrial Revolution, gave it to the cows, the cows gave it to the badgers, we killed all the cows that had it, we got rid of it, the badgers were just left with TB. Like, there you go, mate. Anyway, <laughs> bloody TV now, Whoa. and now they're trying to give it back, and we're shooting them all. It's like giving someone a cold and then shooting them, going, don't give me that cold, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a supporter of the Badgers, and I've actually rescued two Badgers, um, and because um, they came round to shoot them, and I had a cottage down there, and I took them in, and I pretended they were slippers. <laughs> and I, I would have got away with it, but one of them started coughing. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, what do you make of the Badger cult? Well, I think it's interesting because obviously TB is supposedly spread by the badgers, and with this cull now, they're all running for the hills and obviously spreading it even more. There is no TB. The whole thing is just the countryside alliance it gives them an excuse to shoot something that's slightly black. <laughs> <laughs> No TV. Do you think the reason people are so upset about badgers is because they're like our pandas? <laughs> no, people are very, very feel very, very fondly towards pandas. Do you think people see them badger as our? It's like a shit panda. <laughs> <laughs> they're a bit like they are a bit like pandas because I love oh. watching two of them shag. <laughs> <laughs> what a panda and a badger? <laughs> you, oh no, no, no! Two badgers having sex. Not anything weird. <laughs> You like watching a couple of badgers? Because there's, there's two pandas up in Scotland, they're trying to get to have it off. Yeah. So if people like watching pandas having sex, people might also like to watch badgers well, the, do it. The badger might help, because the badger could be like a fluffer for the pandas. Panda just goes out of the way, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll finish this job. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if the badger cart is up there. Yes, the badger cull's been extended, as they say they haven't killed enough animals. The aim of the cull was to stop the spread of bovine TB and to distract Brian May from making any more music. <laughs> John Steen, what do you think the nation should have been talking about this week? Sex box! Oh. Man, <laughs> 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 you seem genuinely excited. Sex box, tell me all about it. They have sex in a box. The cameras aren't in the box, so you can't see. And c consenting couples go in there and they have sex and then they come out and then there's a panel of experts and then they just sit there and they get asked about what happened in there and they say, yeah, we did it. No, no, no. I want to know more about this because I haven't actually seen this before. It's like a porno version of the cube. <laughs> right. They should do it in the cube. They at least should be able to see what they're getting up to. Yeah. <laughs> Am 
my favourite thing is the couples enter the soundproof box for 35 minutes. Hope yeah. they let them take a book in. <laughs> I couldn't amazing. be trusted. If I was on a show like that, I'd just sneak a big toe of yoghurt in and then when they open the door, just lob it all out. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the, um, the panellists were disappointing. I'd like someone like Alan Hansen on there. But he didn't want <laughs> and Len Goodman. <laughs> Len Goodman and Alan Hansen. Just going, seven! <laughs> Alan Hansen going, that was woeful. <laughs> but isn't it a bit like a student house, where two people go into a room and then everyone sits around and talks about it? John, what Matt, did they get <laughs> John Matt, you live together in a house. One of you yeah, must have brought a lady a home. Together. There must have been that. In, when, when you there two came out of the bedroom? When yeah. one of us was having sex and the other one wasn't, yeah. Guess which way around that went. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you ever walk out of the living room and have a little chat about it afterwards? Yeah, he would come down and tell me. He'd come down and I'd go, so what did you do in there? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I gave the badger some nuts. <laughs> Did you see this, Richard? No, well, I'm aware of it. I'd be tempted to go in and just try and rock the box until it fell over on its side. Just go crazy in there. But well, actually, I've just... <laughs> from side to side. I've just that's, a very, that's a very Top Gear take on me. It's a bit pressure. <laughs> try and push that over. Or you could see how fast we could drive a sex box to Plymouth. <laughs> <laughs> there is there's a reason people don't talk about sex, cos not very nice. You don't... One girl said something like, uh, you know, I sometimes joke about it with my mates, but, you know, I don't really talk about it with my mum. Yeah. Well, of course you don't. You don't get to Sunday dinner and go, I had a cracking shag this week. <laughs> <laughs> you can't listen to them talk, though. When you know they've had sex, you cannot... Even if the conversation is mature, you cannot have a conversation with someone knowing they've just had sex. Because you're just waiting for them to go, well, we started off with a bit of... Uh, um... <laughs> Well, I can tell you it's not one of the most talked about things, but Channel 4's new show, Sex Box, aired this week. If I want to have sex in a small, windowless box devoid of any romance or sexual excitement, I'll book me and my girlfriend into a travel lodge. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's team, what else have the nation been talking about? Politics. There was a cabinet reshuffle. Cabinet wasn't there? reshuffle. Yes, people are so excited by it. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what they do is, as soon as someone has, like, got to grips with what they're doing, they're doing a fairly good job, so they move them to a different department mm. where they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. They move them, like, their environment, then they move from <clears> them to health. You don't have that many other thing, do you? You don't have people saying, oh, yeah, you're doing quite a good job working on the tills at Asda. Why don't you try your hand at being a falconry expert? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what they should do is, if you're a minister for something, you have to dress appropriately. So if you're the Minister of Fisheries, you wear a sou'wester and carry a lobster pot <laughs> all the time. Health if, Minister, yeah. nurse's uniform. Yeah, or, yeah, sports, you've got wet hair and a tracksuit on. <laughs> Dress according to your job. Foreign Minister, it could be quite controversial. <laughs> 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 yeah, <we're scared. laughs> Onions. Yeah. Maybe sellotape no, your eyes. No, no, no. <laughs> no, that's where I went too far. The onions and the very controversial. That's why I'm highlighting the pitfalls there. I'm not recommending it as an idea. I might like how wrong that would be. I understand reshuffling the cabinet because they're running the country. I don't understand reshuffling the shadow cabinet because they're not doing anything anyway. That's like the difference between tidying your lounge and your loft. <laughs> no, 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 no. You've got to reshuffle. I think it's amazing. I no, this is you're genuinely excited about it. Politics is phenomenal. And, and all the little changes, sort of like transfer deadline day when they're moving around all the players and out comes Brown, in goes Baker. What does this mean for government policy? Marvellous, isn't it? And he had sex. Matt, you used to work for the Labour Party, yeah. right? Yeah. What, what do you think is the matter with politics? I think, there's, I think there's a serious lack of personalities in it, and I think Ed Miliband is uh, sort of part of that problem. And there are people... I shouldn't like Nigel Farage, but... That's the end of that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> people like politicians that make us feel good. And Farage, even though I disagree with most of what he says, he's got that sort of, like, braying golf club... You know, the sort of guy who'd turn up at a golf course and go, Roger, you bastard! <laughs> <laughs> Guy. 
<laughs> well, talking of UKIP and characters, have a look at Godfrey Bloom, formerly of UKIP. Now, Mr. Mr. Bloom, what do you make of the front cover of this, uh, your, uh, the conference no brochure with no black faces on it? What a racist comment is that? How dare you? That's an appalling thing to say. You're picking people out for the colour of their skin. You disgust me. Get out of here. <laughs> well, but, I mean, I'm making the point that you haven't, um... Got... Well, what's appalling about racist. making that point? You, sir, are a racist. <laughs> what well, about racist for saying... There aren't, you there aren't any black people. And you've checked out pe the colour of people's faces. Disgraceful. <laughs> You're disgraceful. <laughs> wow. The thing is, there are other personalities. To be fair, in this reshuffle, some personalities did come in, and there's a guy called Norman Baker, who's a Liberal Democrat MP, who's now a Home Office Minister, and he wrote a book a few years ago about the death of Dr David Kelly because he believes that the Iraqis did it and the British security services covered it up. This guy's a conspiracy theorist, and he's now in the government. Which I think, that's brilliant. That's going to make Parliament more exciting. He's going to be there going, and we will continue to invest uh, in our security services because they killed Diana, the Queen's a lizard! <laughs> Sorry, what did you just say? The Queen's a lizard? Yeah. That's why they call her Liz. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's up there. Yes, David Cameron has reshuffled his cabinet. David Cameron denies putting more women in the cabinet is mere tokenism. The promotions are Minister for Hoovering, Helen Grant, <laughs> and Nicky Morgan, the new Minister for Total Sexiness. <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers, two more things still to get. What do you think, Sean? Energy. Oh, possibility of blackout. Yes, the blackouts, yes. On, they said, one, there's not enough energy and there will be blackouts this winter. Currently, the UK has enough gas storage for only 21 days. OMG. <laughs> <laughs> it's apparently the biggest energy crisis for six years. Six years ago, of course, when we had no power cuts. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they were tough times, though, those so six it's years. It's the highest risk of a problem since a time when there were no problems. <laughs> People are speculating about what will the consequences be of an energy cut, apart from obviously switching Stephen Hawking off, which would be a terrible. <laughs> I was out with Stephen on Monday, weirdly, at the Pride of Britain. He was at our table, and there was a point after about two hours of the awards, because it went on quite a, quite a while. It's quite a long it does, award ceremony. It's a long show. Where we we had to we had to take him and plug him in. <laughs> we literally, he went. I'm running out of power, and we had to go and plug him in. Really? Yeah. I feel really bad now. I won't feel bad. <laughs> it's fine. I told him my Stephen Hawking joke. He rather liked it. We well, hadn't have much fucking choice, did he? <laughs> <laughs> Stuck there in a wheelchair and you're telling him a joke. What can you do? And he, he's been recharged, he can't get away. He's <laughs> <laughs> sitting there and listen to you. Going, anyway, he's going, oh, ah, standing power. <laughs> Sorry, Stephen. <laughs> Back to the blackouts, John. How do you think you would you would cope in a blackout? Well, interestingly, I've been watching. Uh, there's a program on Channel Five at the moment called Under the Dome, which is about a city that gets trapped under a dome and they've run out of power. And there's riots and looting and murders. And that would be my concern. If we had a power cut, I wouldn't be able to watch that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Are you worried about the blackout, Richard? No, I'm not worried about the blackout. But I have noticed they are advising us to put together survival kits, emergency kits. What's in, in your survival kit? I don't know, I haven't built it yet, but I'm going to spend all weekend doing it at the end of this week, cos I love survival kits. That's my favourite thing. I think I'm the only one old enough to remember all the blackouts and power cuts in the 70s. Also, when they introduced electricity, that must have been a thrill. <laughs> 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 so what was it like? So in the 70s, of course, we so had... So in the, the 70s, you, you had... Well, we had uh, paraffin lamps and you had boxes of candles. No, I remember that. I think it's these days would be much better because candles are more varied, much better scents. <laughs> <laughs> in the 70s, it was just white candles. Was now you've got cinnamon candles, yeah. various oils. Everybody, everyone would be much more chilled out. I think every, everyone would immediately have a bath, wouldn't they? <laughs> we well, can't because the water won't be hot. Oh, damn it. Well, if there's no hot water, you just boil the kettle, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> you can't, because it's a power cut. <laughs> we just watch some telly until it comes back on. <laughs> you, can't, cause there's no, you can't watch the telly. Put a DVD on. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so... Uh, oh, OK, here's a, here's a fun fact. In, in 2008, a two-day power cut in Holland led to a 44% increase in the birth rate. Now, that's because you like to keep warm, you see. You go to bed and keep warm. 
That's because she can't get away. It's dark, isn't it? <laughs> Well, what would you do in a, in a power cut? Well, I think the solution to all this is Snickers. <laughs> should we just leave it there? Or? <laughs> yeah, should we agree? I think we're all agreed, Snickers. Uh, Snick well, Snickers, uh, it's, it's, it's got high energy, hasn't it? A lot of energy in Snickers. Yeah, a lot of oil. Build a power station and burn Snickers. <laughs> Immediately, massive amounts of energy. <laughs> Snickers can give us everything we need. <laughs> That's our new Minister for Energy. <laughs> <laughs> you spin the wheel, you see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look and see if it's up there. <laughs> OK, fingers up, Buzz. There's one more thing to get. Is it the news that our kids are less literate and numerate than um, the rest else. of Europe? There's only a couple of people below us. Uh, that's absolutely right, yes. Uh, Britain's youth have scored among the lowest in international literacy and numeracy tests. Number one was Japan. I think what it is, is actually is the invigilators are much stricter these days. And in Japan, they're just like, yeah, it's all right, that's fine. <laughs> uh, in, it just shows in, in this country we're very strict, we like to do things properly. What, they actually expect them to give correct answers and things like that? Yeah, whereas in Japan, they're just like, yeah, yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> As they're known for that, the Japanese, for being like, all casual about stuff. <laughs> they got this, they got about 650 different words for. Yeah. <laughs> like the Amer Eskimos got a thousand words for snow, the Japanese have got hundreds of words for. <laughs> <laughs> they're crazy, crazy, easy going, happy go lucky, free wheeling. <laughs> Drifters, that's what they are, really. <laughs> We should probably crack on from <laughs> yeah. talking about the Japanese. Well, I think it's good for everyone to have an insight into their culture. <laughs> so, why are the standards slipping? What's going on? It's as though the basics of mental arithmetic haven't been taught properly, and actually they are the building blocks of everything else. Or it could be this. Problem is that, like, sick and ill have become words for good. So kids are going in and their teachers are telling them they're illiterate and they're thinking that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you, man, I got illiteracy in it. <laughs> <laughs> Told me to my face, blood. <laughs> Since I started on countdown, back in, when was that, 1873... Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad you got there before me. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says, you know, oh, Carol, you, you, because you're quite good at mental arithmetic, People think you're a maths genius, whereas he, over there, he's better at maths than me. Paul, you studied maths? I studied maths at university, yes. So you, you did maths at Oxford? Yes. Do you think you're better at maths than, than Carol? Well, yes, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, let's see if it's up there. Just as, just as I said, let's see if it's up there, someone just shouted, I love you, Sean. <laughs> That's how lovely. I don't know how Sean feels about you. I, I, think, I think with the best will in the world, I think he, he thinks you should see other people. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm quite Japanese about the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Britain's youth have scored amongst the lowest in international literacy and numeracy tests. How do you expect Britain's teenagers to learn to read and write? They're too busy bringing up their kids. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the most talked about things this week. But in other news, Silvio Berlusconi is set to carry out 12 months of community service, although, unfortunately, the community he's chosen is a Catholic girls' school. <laughs> and this week, a Bristol woman of 85 got her first ever tattoo. She had the Grim Reaper on her shoulder, watching as she got a tattoo of a dolphin. <laughs> So at the end of that round, Sean, Paul and Richard have four points, John, Carol and Matt have one point. Yay! Our next round is pick of the polls. Sean, Paul, Richard, pick a question. Well, I think we'll have Richard. OK. Here's your question. Most people find driving a stressful experience true or false? False. It's not stressful. I'm usually drunk anyway. You, you... <laughs> <laughs> is that why you crashed that car? Is that why you pissed? That was on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> why did that crash? <laughs> what happened? Tire blew. Tire went bang at 300 really? mile an hour. And... Why? Why would? Why would that happen? Why would a tire go up? It was bad luck. It wasn't a plot to kill you. 
<laughs> I hadn't thought of it like that until no. now. No, it was a tire blue, but it happens to. Well, I'd just like to say thank you for all the jokes we got out of it. Um... <laughs> 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 so I did it. I've actually never met someone who's a text joke before. What, was I a text joke? Oh, yeah, there's loads oh. of them going out. <laughs> I suppose that's it's one of the terrible things, is you sort of missed that. You well, missed that? Seven, yeah. seven years did ago. Did anyone send them to you? Well, no, I couldn't see, could I? Uh, <laughs> there was some crackers going around. My favourite one was, uh, the reason they call you the hamster is after the crash, your nuts are in your cheeks. <laughs> I've been protected from all of these. My wife I never told me any of this. A lot of people have social skills, so they wouldn't have mentioned it. <laughs> but Sean is a different kind of man, and he tackles it head on. <laughs> John, do you get do you get stress driving? I do, yeah. You're supposed to get stress driving. I had a tire blowout as well. I mean, it was less dramatic than yours. I'll give it that. <laughs> Mine was at 70 miles an hour in a Ford Fiesta on the M5 at Strensham Services, and it did not make the news. <laughs> No one, no one Do people tweet jokes. things about that? No, Hashtag no. bored. <laughs> <laughs> it's frightening, though, isn't it? I mean, I was sort of brethren on that, on that tyre blowout. <laughs> How fast were you going? I was going 320 miles an hour. Yeah, I was doing about that. <laughs> that, that but just under. Just, just, just shade under. under. Just watch the speed limit. Well, it's maybe 70. I was doing that. <laughs> I was doing right. that. Maybe just a little bit more, cos I'm a renegade. <laughs> I've been doing 72, maybe I wanted to get home and have a glass of port. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Carol, do you get stressed driving? Do I get stressed? Ride? No, I love I love driving. I love Top Gear. You know I love Top Gear. Should we look at Carol on Top Gear? Yeah. We'll have a little look. Now, the Liana. <laughs> oh, yes. <gasps> I just had a great day. I love the Stig. He was so good. And he taught me how to do handbrake turns today. Well, that's not going to make you go very fast. No, it isn't. No, it Pulling a handbrake on. No. Have you never done one before? No. So did that explain what happened when you were on one of your practice laps? <laughs> the would last you, one, you... I was just pushing it a little too far. Who'd like to see what happened on one of the practice laps? Yeah. Here we go. Right, where are we now? Oh, it's oh, the follow-through. Oh, a bit wild. Ah! Oh, what was this? <laughs> 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 that was my last lap. That was quite oh, close. Oh, this is great. This one's great. <laughs> I have to say, I was fastest in the wet by four seconds. At Fast that in, time. Fastest in the in wet the by wet. four seconds. <laughs> I forgot to issue Carol with the list of words you cannot say to Jimmy. <laughs> I'm afraid wet is one. You just can't say it if it's well, raining. Jeremy you have argued to say it's raining. and he said it was only mildly moist. <laughs> Now you're pretty much reading out the list. Oh, it's amazing watching that, though, cos you look about the same, but Jeremy has gone from 0 to 60. If you look at Jeremy then, there's, there's Jeremy back then. Look at that, he's a young man. Look at him now. <laughs> it's like he's been in that pod, you know, the film The Fly? <laughs> and he, he got in there with a pickled egg. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I don't understand is, why does Sting wear a helmet? <laughs> 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 OK, most people find driving a stressful experience true or false. What are you going to go with, Sean? Well, I, I'll agree with Richard that it's not false. It's not false. It's they, not they, stressful, whatever that is. It's not stressful, false. All right, what are you going to go for? Well, I'm going to go false. true. False. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to overrule because I've seen how you drive and it's made me stressful. <laughs> so I'm going to say true. So I can tell you the answer is false. Yes, only 31% of people find driving a stressful experience. I'll tell you what stresses me out, those white van drivers. They think they own the bloody road with their flashing blue lights. <laughs> Calm down, mate, there's an accident up ahead. We've all got to wait. <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your first one. Top thing people wish they were better at. Is it first aid? Because I always think I wish I was better at first aid. Because the amount of times I'm in situations where somebody says, does anyone here know first aid? And I can't help myself. I always go... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm working on them, I'm thinking, oh, I shouldn't be better. What sounds better than this? I shouldn't really have put myself yeah. forward. <laughs> oh, it's, no, it's, I don't know what's the matter. It's just not working, that is, this. That's literally that's... the worst thing you could do to a twisted ankle. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I was better at shopping. 
You, you wish you were better at shopping? Oh. Yeah, because what happens is I think, all right, I'm going to, on the Monday, I think I'll go to the supermarket, I'll get myself some chicken and some veg and some fruit and I'll look after myself and then I get into the supermarket and I go, lasagna sandwiches are on offer. <laughs> and, I'll, and I remember one week I had sandwiches for breakfast, dinner and tea for three days because <laughs> they were all on offer. And I just bought a bag full of sandwiches. And the first day I thought, this is amazing. And then the second day I thought, this is still amazing. By day three, I felt bad. <laughs> Richard, what do you wish you were, you were better at? I don't know, but people will have said driving on that list. They will. Driving's not even not in the is. top ten. Driving is like sex. I think people think they're good at it. Well, sex is going to be on there, obviously. It's not. You've got the wrong list. What? You've just got the wrong list. <laughs> top thing people wish they were better at. You have got no. the... Well, what else is there to be good at? Well, number two is saving money. Number three is making conversation. Gravy. Who gives what? a shit about gravy? making conversation? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, gravy? Just wish I was better at gravy. <laughs> I'm good at a roast. I'm shit at gravy. But the gravy's the best bit of a roast. I know, mate. <laughs> That's why I wish if I was good at gravy and shit at parsnips, nobody would know, would they? <laughs> handshakes. I'm shit at handshakes. Oh, I catch them at the wrong angle. That's a bit weak. I need what a What were you hoping for? Look at him. He's wearing a mustard cardigan. <laughs> I need a handshake that is non-threatening, but says to a plumber, yeah, I could do this myself, mate, but I haven't got the time. <laughs> Handshake that says it's broken. Okay, <laughs> 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 hey, uh, would help you if you went travelling, if you went to another country. Foreign languages. That is the right answer. John got it. Yes, the top thing people wish they were better at is speaking foreign languages. We had a really great French teacher at my school, but in the end, I failed the oral. Apparently, I didn't cup les balls properly. <laughs> Okay, uh, worst thing about living alone. <laughs> Very much your specialist area we've hit here. Well, I liked it. It's just the, the sympathy is the worst thing. People will say, you all right living on your own? Yeah. Have you not got any mates? Yeah, because I don't live with them. <laughs> but no, I loved it. I loved living on my own. What was the best thing about living on your own? Oh, just all of it. Nothing moved. Just, you know, think I'm going to stay up all night. Doesn't matter. No one's going to wake me up. No one's going to come round. Actually, it was tragic. <laughs> I've just remembered what it was like, and now you ask the question, it's the constant crushing loneliness, the fear it's never going to end and you're going to die on your own. <laughs> <laughs> you live on your own now, John? No, I've got a girlfriend. Oh, have you? Yeah, I live with her. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Carol, do you live on your own? Do you have someone to look in on you in the winter? <laughs> I mean, the worst thing must be living on your own is, like, pulling a cracker, something like that. <laughs> well, I'm actually looking at a bottle of vinegar and thinking, that'll probably last longer than me. <laughs> <laughs> or if you have a thing of Marmite and you don't even like Marmite. <laughs> Just Marmite and you hate it every day you get out and think, I hate Marmite, I'm not going to eat that. <laughs> if you've got two people, you'd say, one person says, oh, I love Marmite, oh, don't talk to me about your Marmite. You and your Marmite, you can eat that on your own. <laughs> if you're on your own, it's just you with the Marmite. Yeah. Just saying, oh, God, I've got the Marmite, don't like it. Yeah. There's no-one to argue with. Yeah, yeah. In, in the end, you acquire a taste for it. Mm. That's why I like Marmite now. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon one of the worst things about living here must be you, you, you can only... You've only got your own clothes to wear. There's not another, like, bank of clothes to dip into. <laughs> yeah, and situation if, arises that you'd need to. If you're, like, wearing women's clothes in the day, you can't say, look... Whoa, 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 I didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. If you, you wear women's clothes on the, in the day... Well, uh, uh, not, not on television, I don't say that. <laughs> but you could, and you just say, oh, well, look, it's part of a loving, heterosexual relationship, it's just something I like doing when my wife's out, sort of thing. Who told you that? <laughs> no, it's fairly obvious. <laughs> so, worst thing about living on your own? Is it, uh, the worst thing about living on your own is nobody to talk to? It's the right answer. <laughs> yes, the worst thing about living alone is having no one to talk to. There's an old man who lives alone next door to me. Still, he's just bought himself a new dog for company. I think he's called it Help, because I keep on hearing him calling it. Help! Help! <laughs> help! Don't worry, though, I think the dog's come back, because I haven't heard him shouting anything in ages. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Paul and Richard are tonight's winners with six points. <laughs> Our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Hi, I'm Jimmy Carr, the guy you just saw in that video. Thanks for watching it because uh, somehow. I get money from that. I, I don't know how. I don't, I don't know. Thanks for watching it. And somehow that benefits me. And hopefully I'll see a live show at some point further down the sunny road. Good luck.